Minister Corcoran Kennedy, you're here in Brussels today about the bill that you're proposing on public health and alcohol. There have been a lot of objections to what Ireland is proposing from other member states. What is the main objection? Well, there's been a lot of support too, by the way. Uh, there are 28 member states and out of them, 10 have uh, formed opinions and submitted opinions on our bill, which they're perfectly entitled to do. Uh, when we were putting in the plain pack packaging legislation, there were in fact more opinions uh, from other member states. So um, uh, the uh, objections that uh, have been put forward are being considered by the department. We have time now to uh, co to correspond uh, with the um, member states and to the uh, commission who put forward um, a comment on it and we're working on that at the moment so we'll be dealing with that uh, as, as we speak. Uh, we'll be dealing with it imminently. The lobbying sector, the wine spirits have been very vocal in opposition to any sort of minimum unit pricing. Do you think that their objections are valid? Well, at the end of the day, my job as Minister for Health Promotion is the well-being of the people in uh, the country uh, in which I live. And so we see the uh, Public Health Alcohol Bill as the best uh, method of reducing harmful drinking. Uh, the minimum unit pricing is targeting specifically young drinkers, people who are buying cheap alcohol and people who um, drink harmfully large quantities of cheap alcohol. Uh, and they're the people that we are most concerned about and that's who we're targeting with minimum unit pricing. So we believe that it can work and will work and we're determined to forge ahead with it. Are you impressed by the Ireland's action? I am very impressed. Uh, really speaking, uh, such bill is uh, provide scientifically based uh, uh, regulations uh, using different different instruments. It is very important to, to, to see how it uh, uh, will work in practice, and it's a good opportunity to to present such good practice to um, to other member states. One of the most controversial elements of Ireland's uh, bill will be minimum unit pricing. Are you convinced of the evidence to support minimum unit pricing? Uh, speaking about minimum unit price, we will uh, 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 bear in mind scientifically based argument. Taxation instruments are very powerful to uh, reducing harm and abuse of alcohol. And it is evidence-based. And those countries which introduced minimum union price, they uh, uh, achieved good results. And of course, we will, we will um, uh, follow scientific advice. And I personally uh, believe in science. Is this a good and necessary piece of legislation? No. No and no. It's not a good piece of legislation for two reasons. One, it won't work and two, it's probably illegal. So two good reasons why the Irish should reconsider. You say it won't work, but there are a number of public health experts here who are saying quite the opposite, that in fact that there is a linear relationship between minimum, introducing minimum unit pricing and reduction in alcohol harm. Uh, which would make sense if we look back at uh, the 20s in America and imagine that prohibition worked. It didn't. It drove a lot of uh, drinking underground, a lot of smuggling happened, and afterwards there were more problems in America than before. If it worked, the Finnish uh, population would be amongst the most abstemious on earth, and they wouldn't have any um, alcohol-related harm. They do. And so it's not a direct line between alcohol consumption and alcohol-related harm. It's a much more complex issue than that. But we're not talking about prohibition here. We're talking about a measure that will affect a small percentage of um, the most abusive section of the drinking market? We would contest that and indeed I don't think the evidence on that is particularly strong. It would certainly affect people. Um, it would probably be quite regressive. It will affect those who have less money uh, so their um, drink will go up whether they drink abusively or not. Um, and that's tied in with a whole lot of the other measures that they're proposing. So it's not just pricing. It's also about making alcohol almost impossible to get. So structural separation in stores, no advertising, uh, very heavy labeling on bottles and so on. All of them are aimed at the market. They're all aimed at reducing alcohol consumption, which is where I think there is a direct link towards prohibition. It's not prohibition, but it's in that direction. But honestly, we don't see it working. It's a much more complex issue, and it needs to be addressed in a much more complex way. 
when I show uh, some data later on, I'm going to show just how direct the link is between alcohol-related deaths and the affordability of alcohol. Uh, there's an almost linear relationship between the two. And tackling the cheapest alcohol is the most effective, cost-effective and efficient way to reduce alcohol-related harm. Uh, and the thing about minimum unit pricing, it doesn't affect the vast majority of drinkers. It doesn't affect the price of a pint of beer in a pub or a bar or a glass of wine. It only affects the really cheap alcohol and it, it's exquisitely targeted at those most at risk. Uh, so it's the best way to tackle the problem. I'm going to be showing data later on to show that 14% of alcohol is consumed in the UK by 1% of really extreme harmful and dependent drinkers and that's where a lot of the mortality lies. Now minimum unit pricing is absolutely targeted at those extreme drinkers and so by changing that marketplace the drinks industry have only can only win out of that it can only be to their advantage even though they'll suffer a short-term slight fall in their profits